Again, this is another sign of the times, an analysis, and a commentary. Humans are damaging planet Earth. According to a recent report by the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, IPCC, we are headed for a climate catastrophe. The floods, fires, and other extreme weather events that have devastated many parts of the planet recently are only set to become more frequent at the hands of human-induced climate change. From farming to deforestation, fast fashion, and food waste, here are some of the ways human beings are hurting the planet. It's hard not to be shocked by images of the Great Barrier Reefs, once vivid corals turned white. The process, known as coral bleaching, occurs due to rising ocean temperatures, which put stress on corals, so they expel the algae that provide their brilliant hues. In 2016 and 2017, the Great Barrier Reef recorded its worst ever mass bleaching events which zapped the color from more than half of its magnificent corals. A further severe bleaching event followed in 2020. The rise in sea temperatures is driven by human-induced climate change. Overfishing. The use of industrial scale fishing techniques to meet our demand for fish is depleting our oceans. For example, Bottom trawl fishing is a method used in many parts of the world whereby a large weighted net is swept along the ocean floor to catch fish. But this can harm corals and pick up unwanted species, including dolphins and sea turtles, and a process known as bycatch. According to a United Nations report released in 2018, one third of all fish that are caught globally never make it onto people's plates. Burning fossil fuels. It's a well-documented fact that the burning of fossil fuels is the prime culprit for climate change. When oil, gas, and coal are burned, they release carbon dioxide and other harmful greenhouse gases, which trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere and cause it to warm up as well as being used for our energy supply. These fuels play a big role in producing plastic, steel, concrete, and other important materials. Fossil fuels are currently used to supply some 80% of the world's energy. Plastic pollution. Plastic is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's an incredibly useful versatile and cheap material, but on the other, it's an environmental disaster. Virgin plastic is made from natural gas or oil, meaning it directly supports the fossil fuel industries. But this wonder material also lasts hundreds of years without breaking down. This has led to swaths of plastic waste to accumulate in the ocean. Between Hawaii and California, there's a plastic island known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is around 617,763 square miles, 1.6 million square kilometers, and increasing. Water pollution. Unfortunately, plastics aren't the only harmful substances polluting our oceans and waterways. Sewage is one of the biggest causes of water pollution. Around 80% of the world's wastewater is released into the ecosystem without adequate treatment, contaminating our oceans, lakes, and rivers. Contaminants from sewage deplete oxygen levels in water, which are essential to the survival of fish and other aquatic wildlife. What's more, the pollution of already limited freshwater supply could be detrimental to human health. 
air pollution when harmful gases including carbon dioxide, nitrogen oxide, sulfur dioxide, and volatile organic components, VOCs, are released into the air that have grave consequences on both the environment and human health. Currently, 90% of the world's population breathes air that contains more pollutants than recommended as safe by the World Health Organization, WHO. Air pollution has myriad knock-on effects on the environment too. It contaminates soil and waterways, can lead to acid rain due to sulfur dissolving in the air, and can lead to birth defects and diseases in animals. Pesticides. Farmers around the world are increasingly using pesticides to protect their crops from being destroyed by pests. Unfortunately, however, pesticides are causing insects to die off in mass. According to a 2019 report, insects could disappear within a century or so if pesticide usage continues. Insects are essential for the proper functioning of our ecosystems as they provide food for other species. Fertilizers, another aspect of modern farming that's wrecking havoc on our ecosystems is the use of fertilizers. While organic materials, including manure and plants, have been used for centuries, the invention of artificial fertilizers in the 1920s led to vast quantities of nitrogen to leak into soil and waterways. In the last 100 years, the amount of man-made nitrogen present in the environment has doubled. Excessive quantities of nitrogen not only accelerate climate change, but poison plants and animals. Poaching. Many animals are slaughtered for their furs or their skins, rhinos and elephants for their tusks, turtles for their shells. Poaching might be illegal, but since these animals are so profitable on the black market, it's still rife in many parts of the world. It has dire consequences for the environment and puts species at risk of extinction. In Africa alone, some 35,000 elephants are killed each year. In March 2021, the African forest elephant was listed as critically endangered, and the African savannah elephant was listed as endangered on the IUCN red list of threatened species. In other words, watch as things die and go away. Overpopulation. It's an unavoidable fact that each person on Earth increases carbon emissions. So the world's burgeoning population, which is currently increasing by some 80 million people per year, is a climate concern. But it's important to note that people living in wealthy countries have had a far bigger impact on carbon emissions, and most victims from climate change are from less developed nations. In fact, in 2018, two of the world's biggest economies, the U.S. and China, are responsible for almost half of all carbon emissions. And the list goes on and on. This too is another sign of the end of times as we know them. Transition days, which is a time of extraordinary changes, happenings, and events. Because it's still about what kind of world are we leaving to the future generations? And that should be a very important question to ask. Mark chapter 13. Then, as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another, 
that shall not be thrown down. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign when all these things will be fulfilled? And Jesus, answering them, began to say, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. But when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be troubled, for such things must happen. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be earthquakes in various places, and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. And all these are more signs of the times.